Hello, BookTube. Um, bookcase 15, Shelf 2, Part 2. Um, because this is not really a bookcase. It's a conglomeration of bookcases, so it's a little little oddly laid out. And there are, there are a, a strange mix of titles because this is my reading nook area. It's not as organized as most of the other bookcases. And a lot of times when I do a book haul or something, they end up up here and maybe months before they end up in a proper bookcase with their subject matter because a lot of times I have to shift around due to space constraints. But they're fun to look at. A lot of times I've I've either read them and they're, they're on their way to a new home or if they're science fiction, they stay up here. So um, we'll start right off with a very popular author right now. I've only got the first volume of this. I'm looking for the second. That's George R.R. Martin. George R. R. Martin. Dream Songs, Volume 1. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Bantam Books. And this uh, was from 2007. So a lot of his shorter works here. And uh, I've read quite a few of them and really enjoyed them. I mean, he's He's been a pro for a long time now, so he's built up a body of work for sure. And this nice little thing. I actually got this on the sale table um, at BAM, Books a Million. And this is um, George uh, Railroad Martin, The Ice Dragon, illustrated by Louis Royo. And it's really a pretty little volume. This thing came out in... Uh, so Tom Doherty Associates Books, Tor, New York. Um, copyrights from 1980 for the Ice Dragon, but this illustration copyright is 2014. And this is the first Tor Teen Edition, 2014. So it, it's nicely illustrated, beautifully illustrated, I think. But when you take off the dust jacket, see if I can do this so you get a good view of it. Isn't that something? So I really enjoyed that. The Ice Dragon. So a nice little uh, little keepsake volume. Um, my problem with uh, <coughs> excuse me, Game of Thrones is that I read the first two when they came out. And lost track of the series long before there was ever a, a um, HBO series. And then by the time I found out there had been more, I don't know how I how I missed it. Um, I felt like I would have had to go back and read the first one and start all over again. And maybe maybe I'll do that someday. So here's a very famous history: Jonathan Sumpton, uh, the Albigensian Crusade. It's up here because it was. From a recent book haul, um, sometime last year, it's Faber and Faber, London and Boston, um, and this is 1978. Then one I read just a couple months ago, Christmas Day, The Glory of Argincourt by Rosemary Holly Jarman, older history of Argincourt. Um, really good book, Little Brown and Company, Boston and Toronto. Um, this is the first American edition of 79. Good read. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, there's no shortage of books on that subject. Then this I picked up. I have no idea why. Gurdjieff. Uh, All and Everything. First series. Uh, series Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson. It's an odd little thing, isn't it? And I, I, I'll give it a read. We'll see. Uh, it sort of looks neat. There's a little insert picture of it. And of course I've heard of him, but I don't know if I've ever read it. So, but we'll see. Then some really strange little volumes here, but very New England. America uh, uh, Epitaphs and the Finger of God. It's about gravestone, basically, and epitaphs. This, uh, uh, this was uh, Stephen Green Press, Press, Brattleboro, and Brattleboro's in Vermont, right down the road here. And this is from 1968. And the companion volume here, 
uh, by G. Walker Jacobs. Uh, Stranger Stop and Cast an Eye, A Guide to Gravestones and Gravestone Rubbings. Now, really old, old graveyards and cemeteries and family plots with, you know, old slate stones, all sorts of things. They're all over the place around here. So it, somebody had an interest in them, and I picked them up as a, uh, this came out in 1973. I picked them up as, at a book sale. And uh, I just thought they were sort of neat. There's one more of them here. Over Their Dead Bodies, Yankee Epitaphs and Their History by Thomas C. Mann and Janet Green. So they're, they're pretty neat little volumes. I, uh, Brattleboro, Vermont, Stephen Green Press, 1962. So somebody who donated them must have been into this. Uh, the genealogy or just the gravestone stuff. And I, instead of letting them sit there, I think for a quarter I got each of them. Wouldn't have paid much more, I don't think. This volume, I wish I had a better copy. It's a Perigee book. It costs $3.95. It's T.H. White's The Bestiary. You see the uh, spine is all faded. And it's quite a, quite a production here. Uh, it's uh, being a translation from a Latin bestiary of the 12th century, made and edited by T.H. White. This is the first Paragi print in 1980, but it originally came out in 54. Um, here's a title page, but it is lavishly illustrated with line drawings. Just about every page. I mean, it's really something. I've never read it. I, I, I'll probably get to it because I'm a big fan of T.H. White. Um, uh, Once and Future King would be one of my favorite books. Um, this is Naomi Novik. This is a three uh, I, uh, omnibus volume. It contains His Majesty's Dragon, which I did read and enjoyed very much. It, it reminded me of a Horatio Hornblower with dragons. I really, really liked it. Then it has Throne of Jade, which I haven't read, and Black Powder War, which I haven't read. So I will get to the, the next two. So I was very happy to find this and... Uh, yeah, you see by that tag, borders no longer around. Uh, let me see. His in His Majesty's service. Del Rey, Ballantine Books, New York, and this is from 2009, and uh, it starts with His Majesty's Dragon. Now, I know this is a very popular series, so um, I was happy to find it, and then. To finish off that little section there, the Green Fairy book, edited by Andrew Lang. Now, a lot of these books, this is, um, I don't know, let me see who did this. You can find these, uh, Folio Society does beautiful volumes. Um, and we see them on the channels of, um, of some of the, the people who collect the very high-end books. Um, this is uh, illustrated by H.J. Forrest McGraw-Hill Book Company, New York. And it's uh, from 1966, it looks like. So originally from the 1890s, of course. So quite, quite a neat little volume. Then we'll move into some, mostly it looks like bean books. So um, I'm not going to do them in any particular order. I'll just grab them here so I don't knock them over. So here's uh, Lois McMaster Bujold, Diplomatic Immunity. And this is uh, Bean Books. And it's 2002. And this is uh, one of the Lord Vercossigan, Miles Vercossigan type. Uh, part of that world, shared world, or not shared world, but uh, fictional world. Thank you. Then uh, Lois McMaster Bujold, Memory, another Miles for Kosigan Adventure, another Bean book. I absolutely love this series. I think it's one of the best ongoing series ever done in science fiction, at least out of what I've read. I haven't read everything. So this is from October 1996, the first printing. Then we have 
A Civil Campaign, a uh, Vorkosigan Adventure, Lewis McMaster, Lois McMaster Bujol. Another bean book. And uh, I just read this one recently. This is uh, September 1999. I, it's a series where I do jump around. I just read them as I grab them. And I've read ones I don't have. And uh, it never seems to matter much. They stand alone. You don't have to have a ton of background in the series. So if you see one lying around, they're worth grabbing for a quick read. I did a book chat on this one. It's uh, Lois McMaster Bujold, Komar, A Miles for Cossigan Adventure. So this may be the most recent one I read. And this is, uh, yeah, from 1998. Uh, keeping on the same theme, A Cossigan Adventure, Seed Aganda. Lois McMaster Bujol. Again, a Bean book. And this one is uh, 1996. <clears throat> and then uh, another Vorkosigan adventure, Mirror Dance. Lois McMaster Bujol. So Miles is from. Miles Rokosigan, he's the hero of most of these. Um, other family members have their roles. And uh, Bean Book, um, 1994. He, um, his, there was an assassination attempt on his, his uh, family. And a chemical was used or something like that. And it messed him up as a baby. And um, he has like brittle bones and he's very small. And this is a warrior society. Very military society, let's put it that way. And uh, normally a person like that would have no chance to have a military career or diplomatic career or anything like that. But Miles is a rather exceptional young fellow. So then here's a out of location volume. Uh, the genre writing series from Writer's Digest. This is How to Write Science Fiction and Fantasy by Orson Scott Card. I've had this thing for years. Hasn't done me any good. I... I don't write science fiction or fantasy, although I do love to read them. Um, this is Cincinnati, Ohio, and this is the first printing from 1990. Then, for those of you who are Star Trek fans, and remember Scotty from the original series, this is James Doohan, Scotty. This is The Rising, Volume 1 and The Flight Engineer by S.M. Sterling. And this uh, Starline this is a publisher, uh, which is a, a Bean Books, from 1996. And uh, they're given James Doohan, who's since passed away, some writing credit on that, but... You can take that with a bit of a grain of salt, I would think. Here's another Bean book, The Hero by John Ringel and Michael Z. Williamson. Uh, a deranged human who lives to deal death versus an alien who cannot bear to kill with the galaxy's future in the balance. Um, and this is uh, 2004. Moving right along here, another one of my, one of another one of the great series of science fiction I enjoy just just as much as I enjoy the Miles Verkosigan. Hey, let me fix this. Is um, are these uh, Honor Harrington books, which I've mentioned before? This is the Shadow of Saganami, Bean books. Um, I, I don't think David Weber's ever written a short volume in his life. He may have, but the ones I have are all good size. And this was uh, from 2004. And there's a uh, map. If you go to the Bean Books website, you can download the first in the series as an ebook for free. Um, you just... Actually, there's a lot of they have a lot of them like that. So um, let me do this one a different. No, this will work. This is David Weber again. This is Worlds of Honor, and the uh, title of it is Changer of Worlds. 
And this is number three in the Worlds of Honor, because that's the one I found. Again, I got this at a thrift store, I think, up in Maine. And this was from 2001. So it contains Miss Midshipman Harrington by David Weber, Changer of Worlds by David Weber, From the Highlands by Eric Flint, and then Nightfall by David Weber. So it's a collection of stories about Honor Harrington. And then there's another one of these Worlds of Honor. This is number four, The Service of the Sword. And this is uh, David Weber, obviously, is the creator. And it contains Honorverse stories by David Weber, John Ringo, Eric Flint, James Linscold, and Timothy Zahn. And many of you recognize Timothy Zahn. He's a popular writer of, um, among other things, Star Wars fiction. Um, so this one uh, came out in um, 2003. And moving right along, another uh, Honor Harrington, David Web uh, Weber, Ashes of Victory. And then Honor Harrington again. And this one is uh, from 2000. Here's the stars. Give you some comparisons on the ships. The Royal Manicorn Navy. Here's some more details. These are a space opera. Um, military science fiction type of thing. If you were to do nautical fiction as a comparison, it would be heavy on big fleet action sometimes, even though you have some of the, the smaller stuff. And then here's um, Mission of Honor. Honor Harrington novel by David Weber. Again, Bean Books. And this one is uh, from 2010. And it contains a CD, which I've never even taken out of the package. So that's bookcase 15. Uh, bookshelf 2 part 2 uh, it was heavy on the science fiction uh, had some other things mixed in and uh, we'll move right along thank you booktube